<laughs> we are planting the tomatoes today. We got tons of tomatoes. Let me take a look over here. By the way, welcome to Wide Family Farm. Look at our potatoes. The potato experiment's doing well. We got our row of cukes and our um, Kajari melons are down there with my loofah gourds. Amish paste here, we're about to plant. This is all a row of Amish paste here. This is my hummingbird mint from Baker Creek. And this is the toothache plant, or they call them buzz buttons. And I've already made my mom and my husband and um, his dad and his stepmom uh, I'll try one <laughs> and it works and made their entire mouth numb um, this is my straw flower I thought that was so beautiful last year so I have a ton of it and it's gonna be different colors and my whorehound's doing really good that's a mint and it will come back some of it's a little sunburn but it'll be okay because it's mint it, it'll be okay let me put I took this as out because I was weed whacking in here. And I'll put it back in. But yeah, I was weed whacking. We have a lot of this vining stuff all over the place. But look at this. We got mushrooms as a sign of a good garden, is it not? But they're not mushrooms that you can eat, so. Now, this is how we do it. We are going to break the soil. And right now, this is all the Amish paste. It's kind of cool. Got ducks out there in our little makeshift pond. I don't know if you can see them. <laughs> Super cute. They're cute, but messy. And there's the egg. Drop an egg in a hole give it a little break some people don't break it but I've also heard other people say to break them because sometimes they don't break down and when you pull your tomato plants up in the fall you could get a rotten egg <laughs> we don't want that do not want that these plants are started at the exact same time these ones did a lot better they, uh, we're in a different style of pot, so I think I'm going to try these, not to use these cups next year. Some things don't do as good in them. And that worked out perfect. Some of these ones that are a little scrawny or two, I'll put a stake in until they get big enough to reach the trellis. But they should be all right. They'll grow fast now that they're in the ground. A lot of people say the two that the smaller ones will actually grow faster than the ones that are bigger when you put them in the ground. We have so many tomatoes this year. How many do you think we have? All right, we'll have to see once we get them in the ground. Cause some of them didn't make it. So I know we had like 78 to start off with, but we lost a few. I'd say if there's one downside to this 
the plastic is the digging the holes to plant. It takes a little getting used to, and a lot of times, like I like to bury my like these ones obviously are smaller, but I like to bury them down another three, four inches at least on the stems because they'll grow roots off there too. But uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult having the, just the hole where you can dig. And if you make your hole too big, then uh, you got weeds growing there. So you just kind of made it point. The whole point of putting it down was no one void if you make the hole too big. So. And I can't find my good garden shovel, my <laughs> hand shovel, and it's kind of irritating. I don't know where it's at. And these things will go through a little bit of transplant shock. No matter what you do, you get that. But then you give it about a week and they usually are good. Like it'll look sad for a few days usually once you transplant. And sometimes you get lucky and they don't, but typically you always have a little bit of transplant shock because you're messing with the roots. But uh, usually within a week or so, they're perked back up and, and away they go. I can't wait to get this all planted and take a picture of it and then take a picture in a month and then another month. like to show the progression of it. But a turkey egg in this one. <laughs> Look at the size <laughs> of the thing. It's like a pterodactyl. <laughs> but we ended up, they tell you, I forget how many eggs they tell you a turkey will lay a year, but it's not that many. Well, I can tell you our turkey weighs a lot more than what they tell you it'll weigh. Because she just now stopped, and I, she had to be laying for over a month. Yeah, and at least a, a month and a half. Yeah, so, so that's what I was figuring. About a month and a half, she laid an egg a day. The turkey eggs are good to eat, but they just with our chicken eggs and the uh, turkey eggs, it was just too much for me to keep up on eating. And then uh, I'm using an organic vegetable and tomato food just sprinkling a little bit in the bottom oh well, that's something I didn't do last year once these get perked back up a little bit like these ones here I could probably do it because they've been in the ground for a while I'll come back in those lowest uh, limbs that are on there, branches off of it uh, that are touching the ground, I'll pinch those off, start pruning them back, because eventually everything 16 inches from the ground will be gone. And uh, that kept our plants healthy last year, and everybody else around here, their plants that had died off already, had turned black and died, and ours were still going strong all the way till frost killed them. And I'll tell you, you take a, like a sun gold cherry tomato, and when it starts getting cold at night, like real cold, not quite, you know, not, not quite frost temperatures, but when it starts getting down in the 40s at night and stuff like that, and you eat them sun gold tomatoes the next day, man, they are sweeter than, than a piece of candy. And this year we got some food security investments we made, getting a dehydrator, a vacuum sealer and eventually when if, if I can find one getting the uh, jar sealer the mason jars because we're going to dehydrate a lot of the uh, cherry tomatoes so we're going to have them throughout the year but with everything going on apparently everyone made a rush on uh, the vacuum sealer uh, for the jars, the attachment for the mason jars, because they are not available through Food Saver, not available on Amazon, Walmart, nothing. 
Uh, the only ones I did find people were trying to gouge you on. And it's $25 or $24.99 normal price to get the large, the wide mouth and the regular mouth sealers, vacuum sealer. And I'm not going to pay you $70 or something for them. I'll just wait and hopefully they come back in the stock. Another thing I figured out, I ordered another roll of this uh, landscape fabric, the weed fabric, uh, and I couldn't, they didn't uh, have it for the same price anymore. It was literally doubled in price. It just went from $50 to around $100. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe because it comes from China. That's the only thing I can think. What kind of technique is that? These are what the blueberry? Yeah. I forget. Is blueberry? They're a cherry tomato, right? Yeah. So these are a blueberry, and they're going to be a cherry tomato. We, I don't know if you can tell in this video, you probably can't, but we made the this taller. It's because they're going to get big. So we finished up. We did the Amish paste there, and then we finished up the row with Kellogg's breakfast. And what was that other one? White Beauty? White Beauty and there's one blueberry at the end of the row. Oh, we did one blueberry at the end of this row. But that's White Beauty. And then these are all Kellogg's breakfast to that sign right there. And then the rest of this is all Amish paste. Some of these still need to be staked. But once they get to this top part here, we can start staking with that. And then everything below will strip they won't have any leaves below that point and it helps with the air circulation keeps all moisture off of uh, the plant and what else does it do keep it from getting like blight and it helps keep some of the stuff that comes from the soil off of the splash back but we have the i think it'll help a lot having this fabric done because you're not going to have that splash back yeah once it gets cleaned off Okay, and I kind of have the same concept that I do with the tomato plants with my cucumbers. So basically, once they get a certain length, I'm going to take the leaves off um, the bottom. I'm just going to clip them, prune them, and then, um, then they can have the maximum airflow underneath. So that way... Yeah, you know, we'll stop blight and stuff like that. Not only will it stop that, but the less leaves you have towards the bottom, the less you have of the cucumber bug. Um, what the cucumber bug does basically is it gets in the soil. And what they'll do then is they'll eat the root of the plant and then your leaves will turn yellow. And once they turn yellow, it's too late. Like they've already taken over. And a cucumber bug looks like a ladybug. Um, but they're yellow and have black spots all over them. So you can point them out pretty quickly. Um, what I did last year too is when I saw one, I quickly took, well, they move really fast. So if you see one, grab it and take it off. But not only do you do that, but I neemed oiled all of my cucumbers uh, plants. When you do that, you want to do it at night so that you don't hurt the bee population. And you get underneath the leaf because that's where they like to hide is underneath the leaf and I was always constantly checking underneath the leaf and checking the ground um, because once they lay those eggs the um, and those eggs hatch then they'll eat the root of the plant and your plant will start turning yellow and you think oh I have a water problem or you know oh it's not having enough vitamins in the soil and that's not the case that's the cucumber bug eating your root so Thanks for watching guys and um, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next video. Have a good one.